personal thank you to Reverend Pastor James David Manning for showing up for his support. Thank you so much for being here. It means a great deal. Good afternoon. My name is Larry Sinclair. I'm a former recreational drug user, drug trafficker, and I'm a convicted felon for crimes of forgery, bad checks, and theft by check. But I'm also an American citizen. I love this country, and I cannot stay silent regarding Barack Obama knowing what I know. Today I will discharge my obligation as a citizen to witness this knowledge to you and raise questions for others to investigate and consider. I'm going to briefly describe my background and experiences with Senator Obama. In 1999, what appears to me to be a coordinated effort to discredit me, and finally a list of questions. After this brief statement, I will take and try to answer any reasonable questions. My background, I'm 46 years old and I currently reside in Duluth, Minnesota. I am a U.S. citizen. I've made mistakes in my lifetime. I have been convicted and served prison sentences for writing bad checks, forging checks, using stolen credit card numbers in Arizona, Florida, and Colorado. These events occurred over 20 years ago, between 1980 and 1986. After going public on the internet with these claims against Senator Obama, earlier this year I became aware of a warrant out of Florida dated from 1986, which I have resolved, and it has now been dismissed. I also have an active Colorado-only warrant for alleged theft and forgery. I am not ignoring this warrant, but am addressing it with the court in Colorado as well as with the district attorney's office. I have a pending motion to dismiss this warrant, which I am waiting to have calendared by the Colorado court. I have lived and worked under three different legal names. My birth name is Lawrence Wayne Sinclair. Later on, I had my name legally changed first to Lorai A. Silvas, and later to Lorai Vizcarra Avila. Both name changes were conducted legally in the Pinal County Superior Court, Florence, Arizona. I legally returned to my birth name in the Fremont County District Court, Canyon City, Colorado, in the year of 1997. In regards to the Obama incident, I flew out of Colorado Springs, Colorado, to Chicago on November 2nd, 1999, arriving in O'Hare early in the morning of November 3rd. I went to the Chicago area to attend the graduation of my godson, my best friend's son, from basic training from the Great Lakes Navy Training Facility. I made reservations at the Comfort Inn and Suites in Gurney, Illinois, based solely on the location to the training center. On November 5, 1999, I hired the services of Five Star Limousine. I had hired them both for November 5th and November 6th of 1999. On November 6, 1999, I asked the limo driver, whose name I now reveal for the first time, Jagir Paramit Mutani if he knew anyone who would like to socialize and show me Chicago. Mr. Mutani understood that I was looking for someone who knew Chicago and would enjoy socializing. Mr. Mutani said he knew someone who was a friend of his. On November 6, 1999, after picking me up at the hotel in Gurney, and this is significant, Mr. Mutani used his cell phone to make a call. That call was made to then Illinois State Senator Barack Obama, to set up an introduction between myself and Senator Obama. Upon arriving at the bar and exiting the limo, Senator Obama was standing next to Mr. Mutani, and I was introduced to Senator Obama by name. Later that evening in a bar which I believe was called Alibis, and I state believe because I have failed so far to get Citigroup to provide the credit card receipts that has the actual name. <coughs> I mentioned I could use a line or two to wake up. Senator Obama asked me if I was referring to Coke, and I stated I was. After stating I was, Obama stated he could purchase cocaine for me and then made a telephone call. This too was significant from a cell phone to a presently unknown individual during which Senator Obama arranged the cocaine purchase. Senator Obama and I then departed the bar in my limousine and proceeded to an unknown location where Senator Obama exited the limousine with $250, which was provided to him by me. Returned a short while later with an eight ball of cocaine, which he gave to me. I did ingest a couple of lines of cocaine, and shortly thereafter, Senator Obama produced a glass cylinder pipe and packet of crack cocaine from his pocket. 
Obama then smoked the crack cocaine. I performed fellatio on Senator Obama in the limousine during the time Senator Obama was smoking crack cocaine, after which I had the driver take me to my hotel, the Comfort Suites, Gurney, Illinois. The following day, November 7th, 1999, Senator Obama appeared at my hotel room, unannounced, uninvited, where we again ingested cocaine and I again performed fellatio on Senator Obama. Significantly, both the driver's telephone call to Senator Obama and his call to the drug dealer should appear on the driver's and Senator Obama's cell phone billing statements. In the fall of 2007, September of 2007, I contacted the presidential campaign of Barack Obama to request solely that Senator Obama publicly correct his stated drug use record to, flect, <coughs> excuse me, to reflect his use of crack cocaine with me in November of 1999. When I made the first contact, I left with the presidential campaign of Senator Obama a telephone number for the campaign to return my call. The first number I provided was a Texas cell phone number. From the period of Labor Day weekend 2007 through November 18th of 2007, I did provide a total of four different callback numbers to the Obama campaign. As I had moved and I had changed the numbers to, to reflect locally my place of residence at the time. In late September to early October 2007, I received a call from a male who identified himself as a Mr. Young, stating he was calling in regards to calls I had made to the Obama campaign. The first call was in fact an attempt by Mr. Young to obtain from me the identities of anyone I contacted concerning my 1999 allegations against Senator Obama. The first call shocked me in that this Mr. Young asked me why I had not asked Senator Obama to disclose the sexual encounters I had with Mr. Obama in 1999. I was shocked as I had never mentioned to the campaign or anyone working for the campaign any sexual encounters as my call was prompted by drug allegations only. The call ended with Mr. Young stating I would hear from someone in a few days. In mid to late October 2007, I received a second call from this Mr. Young, at which time I clearly became aware that this individual was personally involved with Senator Obama rather than just an employee of his campaign. The tone of the conversation had a sexual nature. Mr. Young did not once advise me how he obtained my phone number, which by this time had now changed to a Delaware number. In late October 2007, I received a text message from the gentleman identified as Mr. Young, in which he stated he was intimately involved with Senator Obama and that Obama was discussing with him and his pastor how to publicly acknowledge Senator Obama's drug use in 1999, and that Obama wanted to be sure I had not discussed the sexual encounters or drug incidents with any media at that time. In mid to late November 2007, in another text message from Mr. Young, he advised me that Senator Obama will publicly correct his statement as to the last time he used drugs and I did not need to concern myself with publicly disclosing it myself. The last contact I had with Mr. Young was in early December 2007 when he made it clear to me that Senator Obama had no intentions of publicly acknowledging his 1999 use of crack cocaine and that Mr. Young was in fact doing nothing more than milking information from me for Senator Obama's use. I later learned that A. Donald Young, the choir director of Reverend Wright's Trinity United Church of Christ, Obama's now former church, and who was openly homosexual, learned that he was murdered on December 23rd of 2007. I have cooperated with the Chicago Police Department on this matter by providing them the telephone numbers I was using during the fall of 2007. And I release them now publicly in the hope that someone may be able to connect the dots between these telephone numbers and Mr. Young. Those numbers are in what I now realize was a naive and uncounseled decision, I posted in January 2008 a video on YouTube where I related the above information regarding my liaisons with Senator Obama in 1999. The response was overwhelming 
and I quickly became the recipient of what in hindsight appears to have been a coordinated attack on my character with ever-increasing falsehoods circulating on the Internet. In response, I agreed to take a polygraph test sponsored by WhiteHouse.com. The results of that test have been partially revealed to, end, to the end of labeling me a liar and taken as gospel by all. I'd like to make the following comments about that polygraph test. First, I have been subsequently advised that WhiteHouse.com was a website dedicated to anti-Clinton pornography until earlier this year. In fact, until 2000, January of 2008, to be exact. Second, I have now come to understand that lie detectors are junk science at best, which is why courts of law refuse to use them. Third, a review of the results by a George W. Magic? PhD of antipolygraph.org raises serious questions about the legitimacy of this particular examination. Indeed overlooked by almost everyone is that WhiteHouse.com's own examiner, Dr. Gordon Barlin, Salt Lake City, Utah, observed that on the drug question regarding Senator Obama, that the computerized score found that there was less than 1% probability of deception by me. That's about as high a passing score as one could possibly obtain. Finally, in February 2008, I was told anonymously that Dan Parisi of WhiteHouse.com received $750,000 from the Obama campaign through David Axelrod's AKP Media and Message One, or Message and Media, I think, to organize an effort to publicly discredit me. When I confronted Dan Parisi with this allegation, he did not deny it, but instead withdrew the second exonerating polygraph report of Dr. Gordon Barlin, failed to post the video of my polygraph as he and WhiteHouse.com promised they would do, and even removed posts from their website altogether, claiming that I had had enough of the attacks by Sinclair's supporters and Sinclair himself, quote unquote. The polygraph results, as misrepresented, were immediately seized upon by the blogger community, and I became the subject of vicious lies about me. I was forced to file a lawsuit in an attempt to stop those lies about me that had been circulating. That lawsuit sought to obtain the proof of what I was saying about my contact with Senator Obama through subpoenas for the identities of the anonymous bloggers so they could be linked to the Obama campaign and relevant records of the cell phone companies to prove the truth of my allegations. To date, though the lawsuit is now over 90 days old, Judge Henry Kennedy has refused to permit the suit to move forward so this evidence may be obtained. In conclusion, in sum, you can discredit my story and then you can make your decision on who should be next President of the United States. The burden is now off of me as I have told my story without the distortions that, I've been intentionally heaped, that have been intentionally heaped on me and what my lawyer tells me is an ad hominem attack. Shoot the messenger so you don't have to hear the message he is bringing. I'm now done. It's for others to find the cooperating evidence of my story by locating the limousine driver, Mr. Mutani, by checking the telephone numbers related to Donald Young and Senator Obama. I leave you with these questions that I've asked of Senator Obama, but in which he, of course, refuses to answer. Who wants to be the next president of the United States has refused to answer. Number one, why won't Senator Obama provide his cell phone numbers and telephone records for all his personal and official cell phones held by him for the time period of no more than November 3rd through November 8th of 1999 when we met? Two, why won't Senator Obama provide his cell phone numbers and telephone records for all his personal and official cell phones held by Senator Obama for September 2007 through December 23rd of 2007, the murder of Donald Young? Three, why won't Senator Obama provide all email communication, both personal and campaign related to and or from AKP Media and Message from January 18th, 2008 through February 29th of 2008 for Senator Obama, David Axelrod and David Plew? Fourth, why won't Senator Obama provide proof of all payments made from AKP Media, <clears throat> Obama for America, David Axelrod, David Plew, and Senator Obama's accounts for the period of January 18th, 2008 through February 29th of 2008. On a website that we posted the, today, LarrySinclair.org, 
You will find the documents that I have referred to in the statement.